here is a case of right undescended testis in this case we are showing from the port to port in detail description how to do arcadopexy this surgery was done after initial evaluation of the patient for the testis our protocol is first clinical examination in detail in a relaxed position even after giving anesthesia also we examine the patient doppler ultrasound or routine ultrasound scrotum is done the testis was identified at the deep inguinal ring it is not in the inguinal ring at the deep inguinal ring even if it is in the deep inguinal ring we prefer laparoscopic mobilization of the cord and the vas and then bring it through the medial part of the inguinal canal directly to the subcutaneous tissue and then into the scrotum in darta's pouch that was that is what demonstrated in this case mri abdomen and laparoscopy mri if it identifies it is good otherwise for children it is difficult investigation to perform we try to depend on laparoscopy more than mri with this introduction we are proceeding with the insertion of the ports anatomical landmarks and ergonomics of the ports we are demonstrating here how to put the various needle see this is the left testis and right is not felt the scrotum is also developed not that well but okay rugosities are seen in this abdomen uh, the abdominal space is small in children and abdominal is elastic subcutaneous fat is less and rectus sheath is very strong so we should be careful so i am using the very needle in the palmer palmer's point left subcostal region with a small nick stretch always the skin otherwise you will enter into the abdomen i should be carefully kept just this is the closed method we should be careful with closed method knowing all the advantages and disadvantages now two clicks are hard push the saline first aspirate the saline next and drop saline drop test all are okay then once the needle is inside never uh, push inside like this always withdraw you can re attempt but don't push out of frustration 6 and 5 mm of hg with 1.9 liters per minute and flow on 0.9.8 like that it is better children advantage immediately within 1 liter abdomen gets distended and you can note that uniform distension of the abdomen is present so here there should not be any problem in the creation of the pneumoperitoneum now insertion of the uh, 5 mm or 10 mm port depending on the camera you have i usually put two finger bits above and away from the side of the operation so right side we are operating generally uh, this is the line which is the one which is the for the port placement so ports will be on right and left right side will be slightly towards the midline left side will be slightly away from the midline so now above umbilicus is always better a little bit otherwise in a small abdomen below umbilicus camera will directly come into the space see when you put the camera like this usually it should be half that is a principle so that perfectly suits over here also you should be careful over confidently going the blade into the abdomen is dangerous always give bigger incision than the port size 
and cut the rectus sheath a little bit nick is acceptable otherwise in children see left hand is the break see left hand you observe right hand is the rotation and one person is lifting the hand so here i already told children it is elastic very very tough rectus sheath will be present so always give a good nick in the rectus sheath immediately it will go easily you see now it will go easily see it has gone easily so now we the gas we will on and see and we'll connect the pneumoperitoneum to this after that with gauge piece we will clean the port see here this is a correct ergonomical position whenever you insert gauge piece see we have to clean see see it's holding so whenever it holds it may come out so be careful always use the operator always use the operator and then reinsert properly then we now see the testis in the inguinal canal in the first 5 minutes camera problems will be there we should uh, use the hot water liberally and insert two three times slowly you can see the gonadal vessels you can see the vas you can see the medial umbilical ligament you can see the inferior epigastric vessels all clearly very clearly because fat will not be there you can see the external iliac vein external iliac artery anatomy is like in uh, classical description now we will put the two ports right hand and left hand 99 percent this surgery will be um, right hand and left hand here so on the right side port will be slightly less than 45 degrees maybe around 35 degrees on the left side it is more than 45 degrees like that so now we are incising the rectus uh, pararectal region generally we prefer in the pararectal region because hernia chances will be less than the midline so again a proper incision is must we have attached a glove so that the uh, the port does not go deep into the abdomen at the same time stitching is also advised here I will see whether it is freely moving or not if it is not freely moving we will not stitch now I am using on the left side port it has gone easily now we are towards the while, tra while putting the port last part go towards the area of interest that is the anterior abdominal wall at the inguinal region these are the ports position the camera is uh, reversed because this is 30 degree so that you can see the inferior epigastric artery obliterated uh, umbilical artery and uh, deep inguinal ring now we will take right hand uh, scissor and the left hand this is our standard right hand scissor left hand Maryland see this is the instrument we are using the scissor this is external iliac vein the left hand we will use the Maryland because it has a precision you can see the ureter also so nicely ureter you can see the sigmoid column this is external iliac vein this is the vas this is the vas this is the obliterated umbilical ligament now we will go for the dissection so main idea of showing this surgery is head and down position is very important and peritoneum up to the root that is at the ileocecal region should be cut on either side of the gonadal vessels see this is a psoas gonadal veins so you cut 
the peritone of this Maryland only can grip like this. So this is a gonadal veins. So you cut over the psoas. This is what uh, I wanted to show. Over the, you should be very very careful. Take good amount of the uh, uh, peritoneum on either side so that if you, you have to do cautery, it will not burn the vessels. And uh, see now, I am lifting completely. This is the correct way actually, than the initial way. See, only peritoneum is cut on either side of the gonadal vein. See, this is the peritoneum. On either side, if you cut, so little bit of ooze we should not worry, then too much coagulation. See, stretch the tissue because it is a very, very elastic and good scissor is essential. Vertically up to the inguinal ring, we will cut as much as possible without using the cartery. Should avoid this. But uh, excessive using also will change the laterally at the inguinal ring. See here, no structure important comes. See. Here, this is the lateral part of the inguinal ring and this is the superior part of the inguinal ring. Here no structure will come important. So it is completely divided here. Now same thing will be done to the opposite side. Care to be taken that the ureter should not be injured here. In children every tissue is small. So a little inadvertent fastness will cause lot of problem. See all important structures are here, the external iliac vein, see we are cutting here, scissor is not very sharp here, see it is blunt, so we will change the scissor. So this idea is to release the gonadal vein and make it See this idea is released a gonadal vein. See it should be slow release of the peritoneum. See this is the gonadal gonadal vessels over the psoas. Any a uh, uh, fast and inadvertent movement is not good in children. Two reasons because the bleeding cannot be tolerated much, and uh, this is important area, it has to be done slowly and meticulously. See, automatic the scissor curve has gone that side. This is all vessels. So, slowly we are going towards the this is a stretch I have applied. You can see the vas here clearly. Vas here. See this is the vas. So there we will cut the peritoneum along the direction of the vas. This is a sigmoid colon. This is the vas going behind the bladder. Along like that we will cut. Now we will pull the peritoneum and cut slowly below the vas, the peritoneum, a fine scissor is must. So, care must be taken that vas should not be cut. This surgery should be done little slowly, even then this surgery was finished in less than 50 minutes. This is the external iliac vein, one should not uh, see this is the stretch, this is the vas, this is the vas, 
so peritoneum is inside at a time cutting long tissue like in adults should be avoided in children this is all retroperitoneum just peritoneum lifting so that it becomes freely mobile and this is not possible to do in a open surgery even if the uh, the testis is in the inguinal canal here see complete mobilization is done now we will cut the obliterated umbilical ligament and which has no use away from the vas this is a vascular structure there will not be anything in this because this will always keep the vas under tension vas always curves on this so no use of this completely release away from the vas again because this vessels can see this is again parallel like this we will incise like this we will incise so that that peritoneum release and rest of the testis can be pulled see completely we will release never try to be too close to the vas and never apply cautery for a long time little bit of wooze is acceptable see this is the gonadal vein this is the vas which are the two structures which will hold the testis intraabdominally and those two should come without traction see see this side that side and then release don't be in hurry to cut any structure because it's a bladder will be close we always see this is the vas and the gonadal veins going into the see now last part of the uh, last part of this uh, peritoneum that is superior and medial one should be careful here inferior epigastric vessels will be there so be little gentle this is the most crucial part because you should not hold the uh, vas structures at all and you should not cut the like that this is the retroperitoneum or this is the retroperitoneum where the testis goes now we will push the testis from below it's at the deep inguinal ring don't catch because if you catch uh, these vas uh, and epididymal tubules see this is the this is the retroperitoneum here nothing will be there lateral postero postero later nothing will be there minimal touch should be there these are the small attachment with the uh, you should be careful here see these are the vas now both are released and now we will try to bring the testis out we should hold the testis in the most inferior part this is the inferior epigastric artery this is the inferior epigastric artery you can see nicely the peritoneum is released now after identifying the all important structures next job is pulling the testis out i want to release the vas a little more so that later on it will not uh, be under traction see almost up to the bladder this attachment is released so now this is the peritoneum which has no meaning this this this, this doesn't have anything always stretch and see uh, whether anything is there or not this is a retroperitoneum that peritoneum only i am trying to pull the test is whether it will come it is not coming so here after peritoneum release see you can see the vas going down behind the bladder so some more peritoneum can be released here here the vessels will be there around the bladder so if you go beyond the uh, peritoneum tissue they bleed the scissor should be very very good otherwise it will bleed see 
how peritoneum is released here like this all this attachment will prevent the vas to come into the inguinal canal now concentration should be on the testis never hold the uh, any vas content structures like this you should never hold try to grab only the adventitial tissue cut it see moment it is coming out by itself like this so even if it is intra see now this is the gubernacular part all the below one here vessels will not be there i can cut the peritoneum like in open surgery see you should not damage any any of these structures this this is this is the gubernacular part so if you hold and pull no problem here this is all retro peritoneum towards the scrotum as much as possible below you go so that the vas and epididymal tubules sometimes go down and will not get see here i am using focused cautery monopolar is best in fact with scissor touching see almost i am at the root of the scrotum dissecting some loose alveolar tissue this is a gubernaculum slowly you cut a little bit see here i am trying to this is attachment towards the testis see i am never holding the any important part of the testis like uh, epididymis the peritoneal tube will the vas or gonadal vas should not be held otherwise they, it will see it slips because it is attached forcibly this is a gubernacular region you can now i am want peritoneum is completely incised this is a gubernacular part you can boldly cut and take it out here nothing but i want to cut slowly a little bit they usually bleed also sometimes it may retract and go into the see what i wanted to do here is it may retract inside once it retracts inside it forms the hematoma so here you should be careful identify the bleeder take suction and a small peripheral uh, uh, bleeder through the gubernaculum they are not related to the testis so best way is hold it get it back into the wound and then coagulate properly and release so that once it is released it cannot be it's partially that's all that's all this not all related to testes not all related to gonadal vessels not at all related to the vas and away from the vessels now suction and see once closely any major bleeder is there otherwise they form hematoma in the scrotum that adds morbidity to the patient inguinal region may become hematoma see this stress is pulled with the uh, gubernaculum not through the uh, structures important uh, to the testis so we can cut this little bit little bit and then coagulate ideally it is like obliterated ligament only nothing will be there so the the traction in the traction in the is important here because the push from the testis in from outside will not help here it will not be transmitted very easily see this is a ligament gubernacular ligament trying to do slowly because if any bleeder comes if you cut one go it is not good in laparoscopy slow if you go you will move fast that's all that is a gubernacular in future also we have to hold there only see this is a retroperitoneum this is the iron strands we call condensed condensed endopelvic fascia whether you call transversalis fascia in females mckendrott's ligament whatever they are very strong fascia this fascia is very strong i am holding the peritoneum carefully release all this be careful while cutting anything so now the testis is completely released from the retroperitoneum 
and this should be taut now you apply tautness and see what structures are holding this is the holding this condensed pelvic fascia is holding release that so that no traction will be there on the testis and here also vas small small tissues are there enough that is the vas along with the peritoneum if you go close to the vas there is a chance that it may unnecessarily this thing never cut with scissors completely long distance in children this is very important point now we will check the place where it has to come this is the eselbeck triangle where inferior epigastric artery medial just above pubic symphysis this area this area we will come out this is the area where post rectus sheath is cut first we will use the needle that is that is a place where it is a shortest distance for the testis to reach the scrotum so inferior epigastric artery and the obliterated umbilical artery so i am using the needle and translumination here first check with the needle always than putting the port we put usually 10 mm port see here we are checking where that Hazelback's triangle is seen, and there exactly I will put the needle and check whether my direction. See, uh, like that it should come exactly, exactly it should come. This is for checking purpose only outside. And now same area, the camera person will be there. A little bigger incision will not. cause any problem because this is a non muscle cutting incision and you have to release adequately otherwise the port insertion is difficult so 10 mm port we are planning to insert see sometimes the gas in the abdomen will not be sufficient so better to incise the rectus sheath than forcing the elastic rectus sheath into the abdomen so i always prefer to make a nick on the rectus sheath a little nick so that the port tenemum port like this it will be it will be very uh less thick but elastic and strong so now the tenemum port has come through the hazelback triangle and then the instrument will come to hold the gubernaculum tissue on the testis and pull it carefully to the wound now this is the testis you should be careful don't catch hold with the any just hold it like a, without crushing this is the gubernaculum like this give to the assistant hands so that they will hold like this this is a traumatic instrument to hold it better this is the peritoneum slowly that will be pulled out and gas should be released now see what applying traction we will come to know see this is the area little bit of traction is coming we can cut it off don't hold the gonadal vessels hold the opposite point so little bit uh, yeah there it is better to hold now you take the scissor and release that so maximum release of the gonadal veins maximum release of the You should be careful. External iliac vein, external iliac artery, ureter are there behind. That's all. This is the maximum release we can do, both the sides. You see here, any traction is coming or not, we can see. 
because we are pulling the testes from outside pneumoperitoneum is not uh, removed so it will go so this is a peritoneal fold which is attached to the vas nowhere we have gone close to the vas to compromise the blood supply of the vas like this uh, we are releasing so that it is going behind the bladder more than enough we can't do more than enough and it is not useful also that's all so now we will bring out after pneumoperitoneum is released you don't pull don't pull uh, you should not pull too much like this with now pneumoperitoneum has to be released now see pneumoperitoneum is released so that they will not be under attraction see this much nice mobilization of the gonadal vein will not come in open surgery see now the easily testis has come out here by pulling the port is removed port is removed this is the test is small test is but no problem for that age it's okay so now the test is can reach the scrotum see how much uh, long length uh, the this is a sub cutaneous tunnel reaching to the again to dartas make a wide tunnel slowly towards the scrotum here and then fix uh, like in see we have done this surgery in 30 minutes of time which is not quite long the reason why i am making uh, again and again is you should not have any two three tracks in this one one big shindu uh, now see repeatedly if you go it will go into the same track so that smoothly it will come out here you can apply traction like this and give the incision in the skin and dermis the skin incision is given over the only dermis up to dermis level not the dartas not incised subdartas means dartas not incised so i am incising only the skin not the subcutaneous tissue now classically we apply alis actually these are little bigger alis in children it should be smaller now the small artery forceps this is the dartas muscle which you are seeing that should not be incised between the epidermis dermis and the dartas the plane should be developed and in that plane the test is should sit so that no stitch is required because it's a tough tissue and that much amount of space will not be there the red one which we are seeing is the dartas muscle which is not incised just below the epidermis and dermis all around space created like this this red one is the dartas see now with artery forceps we will make a small hole in the dartas that is actually that subdartas pouch not incising the dartas and keep in the subcutaneous tissue then it will go back if it is not fixed the aim is not to fix the test is to the subcutaneous tissue see now this is a dartas the one which you see this is a dartas now dartas is just made a hole so that one more artery for always you should make this uh, from the inguinal canal here then come back like this so that same tract will be there like this and now gubernaculum will be given same again in the direction which is not a see this is the gubernaculum lie should be checked like that and uh, gubernaculum is held and uh, now slowly like through a small incision always uh, hands are better than the instrument see now this is uh, leave it it will be there only testis 
this is the way lie everything is confirmed and take a bite with gubernaculum to the daughters take a bite see epididymis is almost the size of the testis in children epididymis will be big now before fixing the gubernaculum we can see inside how much traction is coming after inflating the abdomen by putting a small finger at the deep involuntary so this is the gubernacular tissue i am using vicral here only gubernaculum we will fix same almost the place where it was see but through a different tract through the subcutaneous tract where it was in the scrotum same place it will go and uh, put the gubernaculum so that it will not go up easily normally it cannot go after releasing this much the after pneumoperitoneum is released when it's lying freely like this very rarely it causes problem the rest of the surgery is only skin closure like this in the data pouch we have to keep nothing more than that just subcutular stitches that's all it looks like always scrotum it is ill developed scrotum so now i am putting finger and doing the pneumoperitoneum so that any traction is there we will understand now again peritoneum is uh, filled with co2 see and now go inside with camera one finger in the inguinal canal is sufficient for the abdomen to be distended see this is the gonadal vessels and vas is not at all seen this is with pneumoperitoneum 12 mm of hg 10 mm of hg see this is the vas which has come into the post this is the gonadal vein gonadal artery this is the entry point new inguinal canal no oblique inguinal canal straight inguinal canal medial to the inferior epigastric artery in the hazelbeck triangle now when you collapse the gas this traction will not be there so there is no need to do unnecessarily any further in the lab see here also we can now close the uh, abdominal wall see now i am going inside now i will release the gas and see what happens camera up and gas release this is 30 degree up so now i am releasing the gas see 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 how traction gets released and uh, that's collapsed down now ports can come out in fact there is no need to do anything first we will close the small 1 1.5 cm ring when region where the testis is brought out by subcutaneous stitch here i am putting two subcutaneous stitches the gap which was there is filled but one must take care that you should not take the uh, vas and uh, gonadal vessels into the stitch otherwise it's a disaster this is usually small stitches for subcutaneous region so all will improve the results of the patients so two subcutaneous uh, stitches will close the loose tissue and rest of the surgery is only closure of the skin with the subcutaneous stitches see at this stage it's only 37 minutes so laparoscopic uh, arachidopexy is uh, uh, not difficult surgery if you know the anatomical landmarks and release generally less than an hour or a half an hour surgery this surgery see the testis is not moving and we will use the subcutaneous stitches uh here so that cosmetically it is better cosmetically it is better through this wound also you can see the vas and in, uh, vessels so there is nothing to show here except the skin closure so the primary surgery is finished in half an hour so naturally this closure can be done 
for cosmetic reasons. So duration of surgery is very small in this case. You should not worry about that. And uh, important thing is, test is uh, structurally we should feel. And whether it is deep ring, whether it can come easily into the inguinal canal, at least superficial inguinal ring region, if it is coming easily, then better to save it within 5 years. Ideally, it is 2 years. And sometimes, uh, patient willingness also, we will save it. So that testosterone production can be can occur, uh, can occur. and uh, test is uh, function. Uh, here we are not doing biopsy as this child is just finished two years, so we are not doing biopsy here. In adults, biopsy something is controversial. We can do rule out malignancy. Malignancy is rare in this testis, but common when compared to the normal testis. Otherwise, per se, testicular malignancy is not as common as uh, other urological malignancies. Especially in undescended test is so much uh, said, but when compared to the normal test is because of the abnormal location and uh, uh, temperature changes, these test is can turn malignant transformation. In case uh, if it turns malignant, we can examine here in the inguinal region carefully. That is the many main intention after. Uh, adolescence is reached. But in children, better to retain the testes because you never know. It may function. It is fertility is preserved at least up to 3-4 years. Uh, Archidopexy is not a... Even though 2 years is the cut-off point, we try to prefer to do Archidopexy in children less than 5 years. And 5 to 10 years is uh, also controversial, but try to prefer arctopexy. More than 30 ye 13 years, we will explain in detail. That function may not be there. Lot of uh, people say that uh, testicular function is preserved in undescended testes because Leydig cells are functional in these uh, testes. So now, the little patient job, subcutaneous testis in the scrotum is difficult actually because it will be more uh, hypermobile. So this is a picture of the small. Okay. Now we will release the ports. No drain is kept, not necessary. After putting the operator only, remove the port. Always 10 mm port is closed rectus sheath, otherwise it may form hernia. This is rectus sheath. Inverting type of bites are taken. So the idea of uh, uh, closing this tissue meticulously is when you put subcuticular any small hematoma bleeder may lead to hematoma. To help the patient sometimes we may get into trouble. Now the ports are removed carefully. Whenever we remove the ports, put the operator and remove, otherwise intestine may come into the ports. These small ports also better uh, you close the rectus sheath if it is seen. If it is not seen, not necessary. So this is the One should be careful here. 
pile suture in the small runs in the ideally 3 mm and 5 mm ports are better in pediatric population now we are suturing this uh, subcuticular that's why it took time otherwise this surgery was finished in 30 minutes bringing up the testes uh, whenever we calculate the time we should calculate from the anesthesia to anesthesia exit not only testes outside and uh, uh, not only the gonadal vein dissection like that total duration is total duration so but surgery crucial part duration is very less in this surgery even in open surgery people think that in open surgery all these three small port incision is equal to lesser than this thing that is not a correct uh, method of comparing in open surgery we will dissect the subcutaneous tissue we cut the muscle we dissect the retroperitoneum little blindly we will pull the testis with hand repeatedly without seeing what's happening inside that is all more uh, traction to the tissues so unless the testis is in the deep superficial inguinal ring we prefer every time to release like this and then so this small ports also we are putting a subcuticular in fact this took more time than the original time 10 to 15 minutes is uh, taken for this only to give little better cosmesis to the patient If you are putting the continuity, sometimes uh, better to coagulate small bleeder if it is there, otherwise they will bleed. It's okay. One interrupted stitch also will do, but continue the psychological satisfaction to the patient attendants will be more if you say that there are no stitches outside and no need to remove the stitches also. No need to come for the OPD if no symptoms are there except uh, examining of the testis after usually these patients are examined after a week or so for the inguinal region any hematoma whether testis is palpable ideal method is doing doppler and see whether testis is seen with good vascularity or not if that is there there is no need to palpate heavily on children and then unnecessarily trouble them best method is to see over the doppler bedside doppler in the OPD is the best method to identify. That's all. So this is ultimate uh, port position. And then local anesthesia is always helpful. Children, subcutaneous tissue. Better avoid that the external inguinal ring because it may damage the called uh, blood vessels and lead to bleeding. Now we apply the small that is the testis palpable at the in midway between the scrotum and the superficial lingual ration. See this small various needle also sometimes look prominent in children. Any smaller instrument, smaller cut is better in children. So we apply some plaster like this. So from the skin level to the skin level we have demonstrated in this right 
sided laparoscopic arcadopexy. I am trying to cover both here like this because bottom one may cause bleeding, top one will not cause bleeding. So this is Tegaderm which is more user friendly for children and will stay for 2-3 days. So meticulous dissection of the gonadal vessels, uh, VAS is very important and tension free bringing up the testis as uh, low as possible uh, is the crux uh, for the future uh, functioning of the testis. Thank you.